It is the mystery of it all that is so fascinating and important. To Westerners, this is an ancient, almost inexplicable practice. It is a sacred Vedic fire ceremony for world peace, an event to honor the Divine Mother. And its name? It is called the Sri Lalita Rahasya Sahasranama Mahamahayagam. And who attends such a lengthy, auspicious seven-day event here in America? Americans and others from around the world. And at its core, the Divine Mother, the beloved Amma Sri Karunamai. She says this sacred fire and prayer service held in Georgia in the United States in the summer of 2015 was to petition divine beings to show us the way. What they're seeking for? They're seeking for your pure love, for your elevation, for your purity. They are not seeking for your name, fame, your dresses, for anything. They come down, 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 all the way towards you. Why? To uplift you towards the absolute purity. Absolute purity, absolute peace. I wasn't sure what to expect, except I knew it was going to be wonderful. And that was my expectation. As it turns out, it has been beyond my expectation. It's I am thrilled that I'm here. It's not an easy trip. No, I, I, I feel like I was born to come to this, that this is what I was living for. For Amma and most people, the long road to Amma Karunamai's retreats, Yagma fire ceremonies, and other yearly special events begins on Interstate 75 after arriving to the Atlanta airport. About an hour south in the freeway, deep into rural Georgia, you arrive to the tiny, quiet town of Forsyth, Georgia. Getting to Amma's ashram requires another 10 to 15 minute ride yet deeper into the surrounding countryside. Finally, the front gate is near, as devotees turn off the county highway onto Julie Lane at the Shreem Center, the Sri Karunamai Research Institute of Meditation. From here, a short ride to the end of the road, to where each year new gatherings of Americans and many from other countries come to learn about their truest selves and about non-judgment compassion, and love, values embodied by Her Holiness, Karunamai. You know, it's hard to put into words. You, you, the, the feeling is effervescence, and, and how do you describe effervescence in your body and in your mind? Your heart is overflowing with love, and you feel like you're under a avalanche of blessings. This man's name is Zdesla. He came here from Croatia to learn how to chant, but... And so I tried to learn, but it didn't go really well because I, I was only on my own. So I decided that what I can do is contribute by helping to build the place. So I've been coming each Saturday to help build the place, and that's the way I was contributing. So I did that last year uh, before Ati Rudram, and then this year again. The feeling of love and that feeling of divinity and that oneness comes across so strong when you're here and when you're in the presence of a divine. So then we know who we are. And I come for that experience and that love so I can pass it on to others. Being in the presence of Amma is like being in the presence of your own mom. And the feeling that I get sitting down, I feel plugged in and charged. She is just like my mom, nice, caring and loving. Amma had come to me in uh, uh, Whitefield uh, in 1992 when I went to see such a Sai Baba. Sai Baba's ashram. And yes, and so she, I didn't know her because I came from a Muslim background and I didn't know uh, the Hindu goddess's name and everything. So she sat behind me and she told me the story just like uh, as though it was my whole life story. 
And uh, when I asked her yesterday, she said that, yes, uh, I, I, I wanted to clarify in my mind, because then I don't want my mind to uh, doubt it, you know. So I said, Amma, did you really come to me in 92? She said, yes, I did. And so that was like the most powerful. I, I was so overjoyed, you know, because it's like she came and I didn't even know her. And she gave me uh, the mother's love that I felt a divine love at that time. Well, uh, it was awesome. So it's very deep and it's very difficult to verbalize. She says uh, somewhere that we are born to do this and I totally agree. It's very fulfilling for me to be able to uh, participate in such a uh, profound support uh, purification for the world which needs it so badly and we're very fortunate to have these divine beings who can produce these events where people come together and have a even greater effect. The, the laws of nature are different here in Georgia in America than they are in India but it is recreating in the homers today it is recreating some of that same energy. I think that's what I noticed as to, as to when I've been in India. And, and it, you can't replicate that subcontinent, but I think there is some of the, um, the divinity, the holiness, if you like, that's being enlivened in the atmosphere here. You know, uh, 2006, I was in LA, happened to be for social event and mama amma happened to be in LA so I attended her yagna and I was so drawn to amma since that day and when I saw your uh, video? website yes the video about amma amma yes yes and then what and it became my favorite subject I keep telling all the people because in New Zealand hardly anybody knows mom amma oh. I say I want to have a, another darshan of Amma. And when I learned, when I saw your website, I keep asking for the company because only a few days left for this year now. Well, how did you persuade your daughter to come with you? Oh, I was praying to Amma, praying to Baba, praying to God. I said, please, please, I want somebody to accompany me. And my daughter, well, she saw once your website. And she says, I'm drawn to her. So. She's a divine mother, mom. Yes, she is. So I keep telling her, I say, why don't you give me company? And she, she said yes. She had a hundred excuses, but she made it. She says yes. Bring Amma to New Zealand. Well, I'll have to tell her that. Yes. Yeah. We would love to have. One of my joys in this event today has been Amma breaking into mantra, breaking into song. And today I said, I said out loud, her voice is the sound of honey mixed with starlight and the smell of roses and sandalwood. Ye sarvamun atani divya kalamaya manchu. Ye sarvamun atani divya kalamaya manchu. Vishnu nandulla mucherchi tharada vinundutaye melu. For me, Amma has, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing to say. I, I look at other people and it's, it's not a comparative thing, it's more to say, I look at the other relationships they, they others have with Amma and it's a very, seems like a very deeply personal relationship. There's a lot of conversation and laughter. I don't personally have that with her. I just feel that we connect either by thought or by heart. And so in that capacity, she's given me a lot of confidence. She's helped me really bear the burden of a lot of trouble and weight that I was carrying. Um, it's given me a lot of peace over time, which I didn't know I was seeking, but clearly I needed it. Um, she's, she is that, I, that Om Tat Sat, she is that. <laughs> And so the Yagna would go on, day after day, chanting prayer and devotion 
broken only by mealtime. Um, please all of us have to go and have our lunch. I, I love you so much. I love you like anything. In fact, she loves her children so much, she feeds them. Before she has her own meal, sometimes many hours between meals, Ama practices yet again the virtue of serving others. Ama passes out hundreds of meals every day, food that is prepared here by devotees who work selflessly, rarely seeing Ama due to their non-stop work. See, without them, without them, we, and the we chief cook? Function. He's not a Healthy cook at all. He's a full-time financial planner. Amma is here all the time. Even though she's there, it's her hand that's doing the cooking. I can tell you that. <laughs> you, you try to work with a group and that's the best part, you know? So it's all about, uh, it's, it's totally due to Amma's grace all this is happening, you know? Uh, it's very peaceful. There's a lot of stillness, and everyone's very kind. And I wouldn't. I'd rather be here rather than anywhere else in the world right now. So let me introduce you to Bhakti. Bhakti is from Tucson. She Arizona. helped us last year, and Bhakti really, really helps me out because I can tell her in 15 minutes what to do, and for the next four hours she'll get it done. She orchestrates well. She delivers. She's meticulous, she's highly organized, and without her, we can't do it. I don't have any experience. <laughs> and he's a wealth manager. I thought he ran a chain of restaurants or something. No, no, he does not. <laughs> I don't usually go to the hall. We just come here and we cook all day. And it's wonderful. And um, the other day it was pouring out. It was pouring very, very hard, and we were in the dining hall setting up and it stopped raining, the sun came out. Amma came from the meditation hall into the dining hall, and then it started to rain again. <laughs> and I saw that, I saw that myself, yeah. that when she came, the sun was out. Oh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Experiencing mother, the mother aspect of God. It's really wonderful, Tell me really. Um, it's all love. We are all mothers, moms, but uh, seeing Amma, we feel we are, have failed with our beauty. You know, it's so much to learn from her. She really is so patient, so loving, so unconditional. She doesn't receive anything from us, really. She doesn't ask for anything. It's just, you know, the love she shows, the affection. She says, I'm not just mother for India or for US or anything for the whole world. She sees anybody suffering, she just says, oh my God, I cannot, she, we saw tears in her eyes. Amma has uh, taught us so much of selfless love. All she teaches us is just help, help, help. Uh, I think it is not only our uh, uh, not only my interest, but it's also my duty to encourage and attend such events, uh, events that promote world peace and uh, the brotherhood of man and fatherhood of God. So it's just not um, the attending the yagnam, but she also said that it destroys your, uh, you know, karmas, and uh, you are going to take with you a lot of energy, energize yourself, so that you can have, you can possibly with, with uh, positive intent heal, or even spread that positive energy elsewhere. So I think that's. If you say one point, it is energizing and spreading that positive vibrations and energy with everyone. I think that's the biggest takeaway. I think Amma is fantastic because she helps people. I would not have ever said at 15, 20, 25 that I would be that person, but I, I must be that person. <laughs> That because I'm be. the person who's receptive to receive the grace of a divine mother in a guru form. We start, we came here Monday, so each day I feel more and more of the mundane dropping off of me, which is, you know, very gratifying. I feel very fortunate to be here and, and with the grace of Amma, I will go deeper and deeper in my spiritual journey, for sure. I've been on many retreats, many years, but nothing of this caliber of quality. And it was all such a surprise. I think my strongest experience was, um, it was, I believe, the first Saturday 
when they started ch chanting Rudram in the evening and when the storm came down. Uh, Amma said at that time, this, uh, Sheila came and I really, I really felt, I really felt that energy. It was the, 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 the thunders and the storm and the lightning and uh, the sound of the rain pouring down on these metal, on this metal roof was just overwhelming. And then the Rudram was chanted in the background and all of that was just so powerful. I, I could not, I could not hold myself, but cry. Immediately on coming here, I felt more joy, uh, more at peace. I believe Amma found me, her daughter. <laughs> she keeps telling you the simplest things, which are just, it's not worth it. You know, just let it go, live, you know, in the present moment. To be very personal, I had come here with a great deal of grief, having just lost some family members this year. And my heart had pretty much been in a lot of pain and closed up and shut down. And sitting at the Homa, I found myself crying and crying and tears streaming as the mantras just washed over me. And by the, it was even before the end of it, I found my heart again. I could feel again. I could feel love again. I was feeling it love again. And the tears changed from tears of grief to tears of joy and love. And it's one of the most powerful moments that I can remember experiencing in my life. Mm. Pure grace. Pure grace. Um, we've worked a year to have this here and we've just been so excited and so thrilled and so fortunate to be a part of the Shreem Center and anything that Amma's doing. And Our family's here, our children are here, and we've come every week to the Shreem Center since Ati Rudram and said our prayers with Pandaji and Amma told us just to sit in front of Shruti Baba and say our prayers and ask for anything and, and so we've done that. I live in the local community here and I've had the great good fortune to help build the Homa Kundas and to be involved in the renovations. Something about this event is now established this as a, an official site for AMA, being able to serve people and helping me assimilate the teachings in the seva has really given me an opportunity to practice AMA's teachings. And for others here, they're given the chance to practice AMA's chanting. <laughs> And for still others, the opportunity to chant with those who have been singing these praises for decades. And there, through countless hours, sits Ama Karunamai, with each passing day solidifying the importance of this new ashram of the Shreem Meditation Institute in Forsyth, Georgia. Sacred space that welcomes seekers from all traditions. Amma Sri Karunamayi's presence is her gift to us all. Her love is abundant and available always. As she often says, as soon as you say ah, before you say ma, I am with you. What follows are her words to guide us all. We must cross the barriers of religion country, and all other limitations. We must come out of this restricted thinking. The words we speak are more powerful than innumerable suns put together. Every word we speak is a gift of Devi Saraswati. Don't waste Divine Mother's gift by speaking about meaningless things. Words can cause war 
and words can bring hope. Always speak kind, hopeful, and comforting words because our words are prayers and because thoughts have the power to travel everywhere in the world and touch the hearts of the people. If any negativity comes into your mind, burn it immediately with your mantra. If we have knowledge but lack humility, kindness, and sweet speech, all our knowledge is a waste. It is everyone's responsibility to wipe the tears of those who suffer. Be a real yogi. See oneness everywhere. Devotion without desire for a reward will lead us to a life of peace and glory. Contentment is the greatest natural treasure. If you have true love for mother, she will serve you herself. The aim of our human life is self-realization. Ama never meditates for herself. She meditates for the welfare of all humanity. Mother's vision encompasses the entire cosmos. I love you, children. You are my flesh, my blood, my breath, my soul. I love you so much. <laughs>